data. I'm just going to jump there because this is this is still without controlling them everything. The only thing I want to show you is that uninsured bed living may be explaining some part of normal having a usual place of care. Mm -hmm. So this is a big difference between these two groups. And we can see that Latin American and Asian tend to have that lack of, uh, tend to be in a bigger group, sorry, in, the, in our demand database. So and then the child race is not, com it's not surprising, but there is a high correlation between the parent information and Latin America and you being, you be considered for seeing like a Hispanic, for instance, so those are the biggest group two in our data. And it's kind of consistent with the distribution of the population in the US, immigrant population in the US. So this I'm gonna go fast because this sounds a little bit complicated, but I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> it's not as complicated, I'm sorry, complicated as it looks, but this is a probability model that is trying to say, well, what happened if I want to see what is the probability that a child goes to the doctor at least once, given certain, certain characteristics. So given that the parent, given the characteristic of the child, obviously, because there are different uh, stages around a uh, child's age, and you have to go to the doctor more times than uh, older or teenager age, so there is a different use of healthcare according to child's age. So four C is whether the parent is a foreigner and the child is a citizen, and four and C is that the parent is a foreigner, family is a foreign, foreign family and the child is a citizen. So what we're gonna try to compare is whether the, what we call the baseline group, so the group is children with US born parents or US, uh, US family, compared to those children that are citizen or no citizen with immigrant family. And we're gonna also control, I guess it shouldn't be that way, we're also gonna take into account race, family, family characteristics such as family size, income level, um, a status, employment status of the parents. So there is a lot of controls here. And obviously, whether the child had Medicaid or whether the child had insurance or otherwise, and region and some other things that are here that are very interesting are uh, family, average age of the family, parental education, and things. Um, well, and this is what I'm saying, what I call why. Why could be three things, and I'm gonna show you those three things. Whether the child had been to the doctor once, at least once, one or more, or separate them, has a, whether the child has a usual place of care, or whether the child has a, well, the child has, a, has good to excellent health. So just to show you the, the basic result which is the result taking into account whether the parent is a foreign born parent and the, ch the child be a citizen or not citizen, this is the result in of terms. So what it means is that if the numbers are below one, then they, have low, or they also have lower probability of having visiting the doctor in the, in the past 12 months at least once. So if you compare the uh, child of a native family, the order of visiting the doctor is one, because that's the baseline group. So compare one to a citizen child of a foreign born parent has an odd ratio of 0 0.91. So it's close enough, this is significant. It's close enough to one, but it still has low odds or low chances of having visiting the doctor in the past 12 months, at least one. No citizen child has a worse outcome, 0.76. And obviously we can see that uninsured also have an impact, a negative impact, and this, this is considered a negative impact even plus the negative, negative sign. And then we see how all the race group, so the, the major, the baseline group was also white. So comparing to white, Hispanic, Asian, and black are also worse off. Um, and then just to show you that the poverty also is an important uh, factor in terms of having visiting a doctor. And also, then when we say, ah, when we see <laughs> usual place of care, uh, we kind of find similar characteristics in terms of similar results, so, sorry, in terms of consistent with uh, the previous one. So if they don't visit the doctor at least one, then maybe most likely they also don't have a usual place of care. But we see how strong the non-citizen child of a foreign-born parent, the odds is 0.36. So it's 
much lower than a white child of a native born family. But I count them here, but as you can see, as if you can see this one, you cannot see the standard errors. Look at this group. The odds of having good to excellent health. This is perceived health. This is this is self-reported. So very interesting that even though they don't visit the doctor and they have they don't have a usual place of care, they consider the, their their child or the children, sorry, healthier. Comparing to white and native child children of immigrant and uh, native uh, families. This is a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna try to show you something. One important thing is, remember also being white, Hispanic, Asian, or black, is self-reported. So individuals will say, well, it's what race group you consider yourself as. Well, the person say white, Hispanic, all the whites, whatever. Uh, the person felt like at that moment, maybe. And this is when I thought, oh, this is very interesting, <laughs> because I see that even for white, Foreign parent citizen, having foreign parent, par, uh, foreign parent citizen, and not being citizen of citizen status, also reduce the odds of having to visit the doctor, reduce the odds of not having a usual place of care, and for citizen children, foreign born parents, the odds of having good to excellent health is lower than a white American child with American parents, but a foreign parent. White has a good to excellent health, has a more, has a higher odds of being in good health. So I, when I start and when we start going into this, looking what those white people are, who they, who they are, and I notice, oh, some Hispanic consider themselves white. So, so then these people are saying, yes, I'm white. I was born in Argentina, or I was born in Latin America. So then when they ask about your race, we say I always had that problem because I'm much whiter in my country than I'm here. <laughs> but then, then when I'm here, I'm like, oh, I'm Hispanic, but I'm white. And that confusion, so some people that are here included in the white group may be those people that are, they don't know, they self-report, they multiple race, and then they decide, okay, I'm white. So some groups here are moving towards, some group from the Hispanic and maybe in the Asian group are moving to to the, to the group of white. So then it, then things become very interesting because A, we can move towards a higher, a better health or equal health to the native group when you start looking at the lower groups, Asian, black, and white, and even Hispanic. So then we start saying, well, these groups are also, they also tend to use alternative medicine. They also tend to have a better support, maybe social group. So they have, they have probably a different way that they see, well, I don't, I don't want to, well, my grandmother said I don't go to the, to the hospital because people get sick there. So <laughs> that, that my, my grandmother's uh, wise comment may, may tell something about what's happening here too. I may not visit the doctor because, well, I feel I'm healthy enough, or I may not visit the doctor because, well, I have this little remedy that I got from home and, and it's magic. So healthcare difference between, oh, sorry, before I go, Latin Americans and Asian and African again end up having the lower odds of visiting the doctor and having a usual place of care. But then they also reflect the very interesting thing that they still perceive the health of their children much better than, the health being much, much better than the health of native children of native families. So healthcare difference between native and immigrants in the US and Minnesota, well, there has to be some cultural reason to regard visiting the doctor. Two Hispanic, for instance, found out that most Hispanic immigrants look for alternative health options than they when they get sick. So that's as I said, they, they there is something there and Asian group, we know all about all the keys that they bring and all the different alternative options that they, they, they offer in the community. So there could, there could be something out there that the data is not capturing, but is showing in some interesting way. So in Minnesota, the distribution of immigrants are very specific too. We have, a, even though Hispanic are, are everywhere, Somali and Somali and Hmong communities are very big, and it's one of the biggest in the country 
in the US. So maybe the future research that everybody is interested in will be interested to see about the um, alternative medicine use of those foods. Because, because that may be explaining a little bit of the, of the lack of use of the, in the formal childcare system. So 45% of women in Venezuela who have been granted a green card are also refugee and asylum. So they're very different groups. So they may have some rights as a citizen that in the general US immigrant population is not the same. Most of the general Im immigrant population in the US tend to be a no citizen or not having the, the, the rights as, as a citizen and for the use of different services. I have even thought all this sounds very interesting and very nice, but there are some limitations and exceptions that I, that I, wa I would like to follow during this research because it's all very preliminary, as you may see, but I don't know if you can see it, but I feel it, so I, I still have a list to do. One thing is what I said to look maybe a separate research to do something more um, on the ground and try to look at these groups and the alternative use of medicine and see how that can be incorporated in analysis of the access to health and the utilization of healthcare system. The other one is to set the slide again, the parental place of birth. So I can actually see country by country what could be the explanation behind this mixed finding. Ah, the other one, which is, well, as you can see, my, part of my motivation, I forgot to mention the obvious reason, uh, <laughs> maternal effect versus paternal effect. Here, I just said that um, immigrant family, so at least one of the parents is immigrant, but I don't identify whether the immigrant is the mother or the father. So I left it that open to be any of the two groups. But maybe in some culture, mother maternal effect is much bigger than paternal effect. Maternal effect, they tend to be the ones that are taking the kids to their kids to, to the hospital. The other one is the comparison between two entire families, only mother and only father versus both parents, if they have both parents present, <coughs> sorry, or one parent. This is, and this, some of this are probably future research separated from what I'm just doing. Concluding remarks, now just as a conclusion and you can see how I think my research so far is, is providing evi evidence of the importance of the parental activity on the effect of, <coughs> sorry, on the probability of the child having visited the doctor at least once in the past 12 months, uh, has a usual place of care and has a perceived health. Which, which still is giving you information, especially the self-reported one. Another part of the limitation that I should, should have said is that I would like to compare the perceived health with the actual health of the child. Because one problem is that also this population are affected by the silent sickness, like diabetes or high cholesterol. So they don't know they have it, they, because if you don't go to the doctor and you don't check for those things, you don't know until you actually go to a very high stage and then you may end up using the ER, uh, emergency room or being forced to go to the doctor when you are already in a very high uh, stage of sickness. So acute condition or chronic condition. Um, so the access, the, the issue of children of immigrant families, health outcomes and access to health, then it's not gonna be on only talking about access to health, but also how we incorporate these groups and these parents. So not, not, the focus is not gonna be only on the children, but how the parents are gonna be incorporated in all this change in the healthcare system. Because if they are not incorporated, more, more likely the children won't. So there is a complex analysis, as I've been pointing out, because I thought this was very interesting between the perceived health and the actual use of, of healthcare. Um, and as I said, the, the forces behind this could be the voluntary parental decisions probably producing the use of healthcare and maybe the use of alternative uh, medicine because we have these two particular groups that at least we have, we have heard about, they tend to use um, alternative medicine. So <clears throat> this is it. But thank you very much, and then I, I'm open to questions. I was open to questions before, but I know I speak a little bit too fast.